So it is in the same orientation as the object. If the image is in the same orientation as the object, it is upright. It's also in thickened, making it magnified. So if it was on the right side, then it would be not upright. Depends. Oh, no, no. If it was on the right, if it was over on the right side for a convex, yeah, it would definitely have to be inverted. It would have to be inverted. Okay, go ahead and uh, measure the di and the do. Once again, the di is the distance from the normal to the image, and the do is the distance from the uh, object to the normal. So go ahead and measure those di's and do's, and let's find out what our magnification is. Side, the answer is you yeah, better believe it. Yeah. Oh. The DI is negative because it's on the virtual side. If you already have a negative DI, then this is just a negative. Oh, you mean does the negative cancel the negative? Yes, the negative cancels the negative. It's a negative of a negative. Because it's virtual. Because it's virtual. Gotcha. Of course. Wait. The HI, the negative of the HI, the negative of the negative, the answer is negative, Wait, making the magnification positive. So DO is negative. DO is negative, never negative. DO is always positive. The DI is virtual, so it's going to be negative, so it's going to be a negative of a negative. Got it. Yes. Virtual side is always negative. Except objects are never virtual, ever. Objects are always real no matter what. The one you make is the so if the di is virtual, then it's a negative or a negative. Yes. So uh, when you measure di, what did you get? Uh, I got one negative. I got one point six. So it's a negative of a negative one point six over the do was one point one. Okay, 1.1. So this gives you a positive value of 1.45. 1 1.45, 1 all right. So that's our magnification. The number larger than one tells you the image is in fact magnified, and the non-negative, the positiveness, tells you that it is in fact upright. Cool? Yes. All right. And you can use the, the Equation, right? The 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. You can use that, okay? We don't have to go through that a million times again, right? Am I correct in assuming that you don't, we don't have to do that again? You can do the fractions. You do it in the worksheet. It's the same, exactly the same math. Okay, cool. All right, let's take a break. Yes. And we'll leave this up here for a second, and we're going to take a break and go back to notes, and we're going to do the ray diagramming for the concave lens. Let's talk about the human eye. Who has who has at least one eye? It's like most of us. Some of us have two. <laughs> totally cool. Uh, so this is not a uh, anatomy class, so I'm not going to ask you to memorize all the bits of the eye. But you guys are interested in anatomy, so um, let's talk about a few of the important bits of the eye. So light comes in. The pupil is basically considered to be this whole chunk right here, this package, and uh, the cornea is right here. The cornea is this thing right here. So this is the cornea. You're like, it goes into the cornea. The cornea is the bulbous part of the front of your eye. Okay. The pupil is where the light comes into this lens here. This is the lens, and then this is the iris. So people think, oh, my, my, um, when you shine light, what happens is the iris kind of pulls closer to itself and closing, reducing the amount of light that goes into the lens. When you wake up in the middle of the night, your eyes have been closed for a long time, the iris pulls the muscles back so you get lots of light going into the lens, which is kind of neat. Now, is this a converging or a diverging lens? 
converging because it's fatter on either side. So what happens is the light comes in and then it converges at the lens. By the way, the rest of this stuff, the outside layer is called the, con the, um, the conjunctiva. Conjunctiva. So when you get pink eye, it's actually called conjunctivitis. Yeah. The conjunctivitis, when the conjunctiva becomes uh, gunky with bacteria, that's conjunctivitis. Anyway, and then this is all gooey. This is actually a fluid. So light's going from air to fluid to fluid. And then this bundle of, of chemical uh, receptors is called the retina, which is kind of fun. And little chemical reactions go poof. When light hits the chemicals, they give off electrical signals. The fovea picks that up, the optometer picks it up, and turns into images. You can see. So that's how it works. Question. So you know in movies, some movies where they like take their eye out, is it actually possible for eye to like be taken out by the optometer? Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> yes. It is entirely possible. Uh, your your optic nerve is is as I understand it, about an inch longer than it needs to be. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Is that why some people can pop their eyes out like this? Like where they go like this and they pop their eyes out? And they like their eyes out? Have you never seen that? Uh, that's a new one to me. Yeah. Um, apparently, I learned, I learned not, not joking, I learned about 24 hours ago that uh, someone who, a friend of a friend, he has a medical condition where his the fluid in his eyes leak, oh. and his eye becomes smaller than his eye socket. Oh. Yeah. So he has to have he has to have surgery. He has to have surgery to like make his eye the proper shape again. I don't know. Oh, the milk isn't coming out of your eye. It's coming out of your tear duct. Okay. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I also, a couple years ago, I discovered that air comes out of my tear duct when I sneeze. Yes. Uh, I don't know why that is. I don't know why your tear duct is connected to your sinuses. You guys figure that out and tell me. Uh, but there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is nearsighted and farsightedness. If you are farsighted, and again, very few of us are farsighted, um, but if you are farsighted, what's going on is the lens is causing the light to converge not enough not converging enough so the the light is actually converging behind the retina so farsightedness again not a lot of us are farsightedness farsightedness is fixed with a converging lens in other words the rays need to converge before they enter your eye you've got to cause them to converge before they converge these are the people who have convert. Basically, these are the people who uh, look like this. Are those people with, like the bifocals? <laughs> Where their eye is like blown up and gigantic. Right. right. <laughs> so you know someone's farsighted because their eye looks bigger than it actually is. Like I'm an anime. Right, <laughs> um, <laughs> what? So, so it's it's again. The people who have a, like a gigantic eyeball, and you can't wear contact either, you have to wear glasses. Like, I have a giant eye, I'm an anime character. They're farsighted. The rest of us, um, the rest of us are nearsighted, and you can tell someone's nearsighted because their face will actually be closer in in the glasses. Like, I'm looking at, at Ian right now, and the side of his face, it looks like this. Like, head, glasses, head. The side of the head is pushed in a little bit. You probably, you can see that in my glasses too, the side of my head is actually closer yeah. to my nose. Um, so that's nearsighted. And what happens with nearsightedness is your eye is converging the light too much or too soon. So you have to cause the light to diverge a little bit before it converges. So you need a diverging lens? Yes. So if you are nearsighted, like most of us are, um, the center of our glasses are actually thinner than the outside. Or divergent. For real? Yeah. For real. And if you have contacts, the center of your contact is actually the thinnest, the thinnest part of your contact. So what if you're both? If you're both? Um, you got really big small eyes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> not my, you know, old people have bifocals? I don't know, that's not, that's not my wheelhouse. 
<laughs> okay, so for the remaining 15 minutes, for the remaining 15 minutes, we're going to talk about how to draw rays for concave lenses. And again, a concave lens is a diverging lens. So since it is a diverging lens, this is ray, this is focal number one, this is focal number two. This is your primary focal, this is your secondary focal. <laughs> okay. The system doesn't change except the location of the focal points change. And this is the hardest part with diverging lenses. Okay. So the first ray is still parallel focal. Oh, so we got to draw the normal. Draw our normals. Draw our normals in. I recommend drawing the normal through the middle of the lens, but you can draw it wherever you want. Yeah, the worksheet isn't like not quite lined up. No. I don't know why. So what are you gonna do? It's not really gonna have that much of it. It's not gonna have a huge impact on our diagram. Okay, so our first ray is parallel then focal. So, parallel to the principal axis, striking the normal, then you aim at the focal point. Now, the focal point you aim at is actually behind the lens. So this one is virtual, <coughs> and this one is real. Because the last lens set of lenses we did was, was convex, now we're doing concave. I know, but I thought that the, the, the dashed lines split. Dashed lines are still, the virtual side is still the left side. <coughs> this is why we're practicing. Can you see how the ray is diverging? The light ray is diverging as it travels through the lens. Yes. Oh, this lens is like this. Oh my gosh. That one didn't go very well. Can I back up to the ray diagramming slide? To bring out what they need for, for eyes? So, first ray, parallel then focal. If you got a ray that looks like mine, give me a thumbs up. Okay, next ray, focal parallel. The next ray, you take your straight edge, aim at the opposite focal, just like before, trace to the normal. Once you hit the normal, then you can go parallel. Real parallel, virtual parallel. is right to the center of the lens. Yay, third ray. Nothing special about the third ray. It's still right to the center of the lens. Virtual on the left, real on the right. So line up your straight edge with the center of the lens. Virtual on the left side and real on the right. Why do you do that? 
for a while. I don't know. For fun. For fun. I'm waiting for one of the uh, one of the kids. <coughs> I'm waiting for one of the kids that actually has a class or for first lunch, like break the window. Just like pound, 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 pound. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, as far as I've learned, the rays that strike our retina are are inverted. Um, but our brains basically they, they take care of it. Just kidding. I don't know. Yes. In fact, I took a psychology course in, uh, in high school, and that was one of the things they did. They, they put goggles on a bunch of people so their images were flipped over, and it took them less than a day to adjust. No. Because I, 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 doing, that, doing that kind of research on teenagers requires lots of paperwork. These were college students. What if we had them on our own? Then you can drive, yeah. Okay. So let's get back to work. We got about five. We got about five minutes left. So did you get an image, a tiny little image right here? Yeah. Here's the great thing about diverging lenses. They're annoying, but they always make itty bitty images. And the itty bitty images they make will always be virtual. A diverging lens can only make a virtual image. Can't make anything else but a virtual image. An itty bitty virtual image. So let's go ahead and throw some words at this. What would you call this? Virtual. It would be virtual. Yep, it's virtual. It's definitely uh, reduced. Upright. And it is upright. So without even calculating it, what would you expect the M to be? Maybe like 0.5. Would it be positive or negative? Uh, negative. No. Positive. 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 You would expect the M to be positive because it made an upright image, and you would expect the M to be less than one because it's reduced. So you can look at the magnification. The magnification will tell you what kind of image you have, and the image will tell you what kind of magnification you have. So it is a reduced image, so your magnification is going to be less than one, and it is upright, so your magnification is going to be positive. Okay. Do you guys want to work on the last one by yourself? Sure. Okay. Give it a try. I'll be behind you by a few minutes. Okay. So try the last one on your own. I will be behind you by a few minutes. Yeah. The first ray that hits the mirror, or hits the lens, doesn't count. Does that make sense? The only rays that count are after they bend. Yep. But again, that ray doesn't count. If you could, if I could draw it without actually drawing it, I would. I try to make that line light, because that ray does not make an image. Oh. Okay. So that target, that target ray, before it bends in normal, does nothing at all. It's just, it's one of those, yeah. It, it doesn't do anything because it hasn't hit the mirror, it hasn't hit the lens yet. So, does the real and virtual side stay the same? Yes. Okay. Real side is always where the light is, and light travels through a lens.
Close enough. 